Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Today we are checking out the latest dedicated e-reader, not an e-note device, but an e-reader device from books called The Leaf. Mm, looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? Mm. This is a 7 inch e-reader only, so no, capa no um, vacuum layer or EMR compatibility. And uh, yeah, let's check it out. Let's unbox it, see the first impressions and what does it seem to be like. All right, and here is the new just dedicated reader from books and it's supposed to be different than the poke series uh, mainly because right out of the gate it's a seven inch e-ink tablet and it's called the leaf so let's unbox it and see what it's like okay here it is it looks like a small remarkable too <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, all right that's uh, that's that's quite a, a stunning uh, similarity here all right let's let's see further what do we get in here a USB C cable and warranty and the quick start guide so in the package you get the device cable for charging and data communication and some documentation all right let's focus on the device all right so let's uh slide it out and yeah that's uh that's hmm. okay I'm, I'm going to reserve my initial reaction here other than it visually looks uh extremely a lot like a small seven inch remarkable two device um, on the back, it, it's so similar that this is kind of ridiculous. It's a little bit on the nose um, because the the Note Air, for example, has enough differences come all over to actually see that this is its own device. Then let me just illustrate the point here. I mean, seriously, are you kidding me? We have the almost exactly the same proportion width of the side, almost exactly the same coloration and very, very similar attempt of the coloration here. Then you have same coloration on the side, s different design on the back, which is a good thing to see. And this, except that this is much thicker because it's so much smaller. So yeah, the first impression is this looks like a seven inch remarkable reader, yet it has a books logo on it. I don't understand why they would opt to do for something that looks so much like the remarkable that's not uh, it's not cool all right so this is the books leaf 2 um, and this is a dedicated e-reader so uh, let's see what the layout is the first impressions are this is extremely portable it has good weight distribution it has a nice arc to the back to actually make it hold holding it nice this extra width here i think I, i'm used to kobo and i'm used to other ones where the width is a little bit more uh, and then it allows for a bit more comfort while holding it here so this i believe my initial impression at least is that this is a little bit too narrow so if this was a little bit wider then it would allow the device to be even thinner because it would be you know uh, 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 you would have more surface here and you would have a little bit more uh, comfortable uh, room to hold it right now I'm holding it by the edge and that edge is not super comfortable because I don't have enough area to rest my entire thumb because as you can see if I rest my entire thumb on this uh, some of it will go on the screen which is definitely not what I like and then as I move my thumb here I have to reposition all of my uh, hand and you can see that the contact with here uh, with this portion of the hand is minimal Ideally, you would want it to go inside, to rest in here, and to have this kind of ergonomic position, so that this majority, uh, this part of the hand, which is really, really strong, is absorbing the majority of the weight. Weight is not much, it's a flexible device, but as far as ergonomics go, this is not good. You're, you're holding it by the edge, and e immediately, initial impression is, I'm going to struggle with this. I'm always touching it by the edge and that's forcing the device constantly to kind of pull 
on half of my thumb and half of this muscle. So I don't like the ergonomics of it and I think it should have been wider. There's a reason why Kobo and um, Oasis are wider. All right, so on the front we have a flush screen, no bezel. We have some kind of a um, screen foil applied. I guess that would be anti-glare, which is okay. It's not the best, but it's okay. And let's see, yeah, yeah. I, I thought that Note 5 was actually better and it most definitely is um yeah you can definitely see it quite a lot on this one yeah that's uh that's actually quite a bit of a difference so yeah the the reflectivity of the screen is okay but it definitely could be better which is something that's important especially for the device that needs to be uh, used outside as an e-reader in brightly bright conditions and where the sun can actually hit it um, quite strongly the build is all plastic this is all plastic there's it just is painted so this is all plasticky and to be honest for the price range because this is quite a pricey device Mm, maybe maybe i expected a little bit more but uh we'll see it, it looks like a okay quality plastic but it's a little scratchy as well and clacky which is not something that i've seen in a while um we got nothing on the sides yep uh we got the power connection here i guess for the flipbook cover uh, nothing on the back, very similar design like the Note 5, uh, except that it's using this gray color. Um, is it anti-slip? Yeah, you can actually hold it quite nicely there, so that's okay. On the top we have a power button with the built-in LED indication for the status. The power button is not recessed, it protrudes just a little bit like it's standard on previous models but since we, they introduced this on the Note 5 it could have been a nice thing to actually see on all of the new devices that use this to have it recessed. On the bottom we have surprisingly stereo speakers, a microphone and a USB-C and very very interestingly, extremely interestingly, uh, two screws which might mean that you are able to maybe service this. Is this possible? Has somebody produced a new device that's actually serviceable that you can open it? In that case, I'm all for the plastic bucket design if that is the point that you can actually open it up, change the battery if you need to or fix it and put it back up because that's not possible with the Nova Air, for example, because it has this kind of a uh, built-in design and majority of the new designs are not made to be serviceable. So if the leaf is actually serviceable and these screws mean that, that's a very nice thing to see. All right, so overall, very light, kind of comfortable, but not totally because these are they're it's uh, it would be disingenuous to call them sharp they are not sharp edges but they are kind of uh, steep and the plastic is firm and i do feel them even if i'm like just using it like this to kind of use it i do feel them a little bit mind you this is nothing really bad but uh, it's it is there it's something that I'm definitely reacting to and feeling the build quality is very nice there's nothing kind of protruding anywhere so yeah the only thing that I find confusing is that everything that I see here seems like a cost saving measure right and this would make a lot sense if this was a device that costed maybe 150 or 170 bucks but it doesn't so what's why why what's the deal that's that's the thing that i'm kind of curious about because this is this is quite pricey and what i'm seeing here is not entirely matching up the price range okay let's fire it up and see what do we get this is the first time powering up the book's uh, leaf and this is going to be interesting to see because this is the first time to see Android 11 OS 3.2 on a reader-only device. Because all the other devices so far have been um, yeah, writing capable, including the Nova Air. And this is the first one that's just an e-reader. Uh, right off the gap, right out the gate. I don't know if you guys see that, but I certainly do. There's a shadow here on the side and a smaller one on this side, but this one is very, very noticeable in the front light. So that's not the best 
performing front light I've seen. It's it's good that it's not like a diagonal one, but it's still quite a bit pronounced here. I don't know how much the camera can get that. I hope it can, because it's kind of um, unusual. Again, other devices I haven't seen have this. All right, the um, touch responsiveness is good and the clarity is quite nice. All right, so it's now starting up. And yeah, this is a very similar design like with the Poke series, Poke 2 and Poke 3. You got your library, uh, everything is down here on the bottom. Library, store, storage, apps, settings, obviously no notes because this is not a note capable device. What? Is this running an OS? What, what OS is this running? Because this is not OS 3.2. And it's an Android version 10? Okay. So Leaf is running an Android version 10 and currently is on version 3.1. Okay, so I'll see if it has an update for a 3.2. Let's hook up online and see. All right, so it's connected and immediately it has a firmware update. And a firmware update is 3.2. All right, so it will get the 3.2 update, which is a good thing to see. But a very, very big disappointment is that this is a brand new device and it's coming with Android 10. So traditionally, the update just updates the OS version, not the entire Android. So we'll see if that actually updates the Android uh, version on this one. But if it doesn't, I would be, I think that it's a really, really big disappointment for a completely new device to come out and to have the, not have the latest Android version. That's again, for the price range, just doesn't make any sense. So yeah, okay. So let's get rid of the navigation ball immediately and then just kind of do a little bit of testing out to kind of see what's what and how it behaves. Do we have anything in the library? No, we have the store. So maybe we can download something from the storage. All right, so here is Lewis Carroll's uh, Alice in Wonderland. But before I do that, let's... Um, oh, this one doesn't have those gestures. I really need to update this. But uh, let's go to here and see the uniformity of the light. Yeah, the shading is most definitely there in the warm light, the bright light, um, the daylight. Um, brightens it up a bit um, but it's still present so definitely it's there but other than this shade on the side the uniformity is quite good and I don't find it that distracting because it looks more like a bit of a shadow um, but it's not perfect it's a very pleasant front light but not perfect because of this side thing the range is excellent and you can actually find a really really comfortable uh, setting here. So this is something that they really like. So that's a good thing to see. Now for the reader performance, uh, let's see, this is the normal one here, switch to Vita 2 engine, not yet. So uh, there's no point in me testing this because I need to update it to the version 3.2, which is the huge performance update and everything else. But what I do want to see is basically general performance here. And let's just format this to have font size a lot smaller. All right, so this is with the smallest font. And the crispness of the image is quite nice. I think that it looks really good. And the contrast is very, very readable. Uh, it's comfortable to hold in the hand and the weight is good. Yeah, you feel a tiny bit of that uh, kind of corner, but nothing really that bad. But I don't like, yeah, definitely I, I can use this on the side, but I don't like it. I'm, I keep repositioning it because this is so thin. So um, yeah, one handed use is okay because it's not slippy, but I would have preferred it to be wider to be able to hold it like this, just, just this much wider. And then it would have been great. Right now it's a little bit too uh, narrow. Um, Touch responsiveness, very, very good. 
readability really good and the performance as i said we will see once i update it because update 3.2 all right so that's the first impressions of the books leaf um for me the first impressions are a bit of a mixed bag because the ergonomics are not exactly there it's a complete ripoff of the uh, remarkable 2 design so much so that it's really really on the nose and i don't i don't like that um it's um it it feels like it should be a more budget like device yet it's priced very very high you get the android 10 out of the box let's see if maybe an os update 3.2 updates it to android 11 but i seriously doubt that so first impressions meh i'm not totally convinced but let's test it out and then we'll see more in the upcoming in-depth review all right so that's the first impressions of uh, books leaf the seven inch dedicated e-reader so poke series was the previous dedicated e-reader and that was at six inches and now we have it grown into seven inches when i initially asked like oh is this the successor to poke um the reply that i gotten was no this is an entirely new device and everything new but realistically no not really um because the concept is exactly the same yes it looks different and everything but the user interface is the same the uh, application Applications are the same and all of those things. To all intents and purposes, it's a grown-up um, poke, basically, but it's called Leaf and it looks like Remarkable too. So um, that's what it is. One thing that I immediately noticed after I spent a little bit more time after unboxing it, reading, it has really an exceptionally sharp, clear and good, good image. Noticeably better, quite noticeably better than the rest of the devices like Nova Air and all of the other uh, writing enabled devices because they have that Wacom layer on top. And obviously this one has been calibrated to have the optimal image quality. And that one definitely shows as a first impression. On another hand, there's uh, again software issues here by default the gestures the swipe up gestures were not enabled in the setup here and that's kind of weird because when i got into an app because there's no button there's nothing um i didn't have a way to back out of the app at all and i was stuck in an app completely so the only way around it was to long press here and restart the device and then go into gestures and enable it to be able to swipe up for back and all of these things. So that's a pretty big fluke. For me, it wasn't a big deal, but for somebody who's a novice and who just wants a very seamless reading experience, this default configuration that I at least got in my device here was not good because yes i am tech savvy i understand what's going on and i know i know how to solve it but an average user of this device would not know and for all intents and purposes they would have been stuck and that's not what you want in a device like that so hopefully that's something that they'll fix but uh, also if you got this one and you get stuck just remember you gotta go into settings enable the gestures swipe up gestures and make one of them one of them is default uh, by default back anyway so just make sure that that's on uh, and also during your initial setup because on this one it wasn't and that was a problem so the first impressions are um excellent image quality really really outstanding image quality um a little bit bulky uh, i don't like fully the ergonomics as i talked about it but it's passable it's okay but nothing really exceptional um for me kobo libra 2 is better uh sage is better for sure uh, but this remains to be tested out because it's supposed to have ages of battery life which normally books devices have and it's supposed to be ultra light portable uh, reader on the go which it is it's ultra light how portable is it mm, poke was more portable for me poke was more portable because it was smaller narrower it was just a little bit more it was thinner and it still had plenty of oomph and battery life so it remains to be seen like is this worth it but 
The main problem for this one is the price, because even now when it's discounted, when you buy it on the um, uh, books site, you get a bundle discount for 285, 286 US dollars. You get this and a magnetic case or 249 dollars for the leaf sleeve. I don't know about the leaf magnetic cover uh, because I haven't tested it for the leaf, but if it's the same as it was for the Nova Air, that one I didn't like at all. It was very bulky and things like that. But then again, that's one of the points of this one. You get the extra functionality and some buttons on that leaf cover. So maybe, maybe that also adds the extra width here that I'm complaining about here, that it's more ergonomic and maybe it's been designed to just always go with the magnetic case. But in that case, it should always be sold with that. Um, if that was the design decision, I don't know. It remains to be tested and seen. Where I was able to purchase it, there was no uh, magnetic case available and there was no bundle available. I was only able to actually buy it like this. So there's that as well. And the price that I had to pay here in Norway just for the device was $300, not the bundle here. So the price is really, really on the high side. And this needs to justify that very, very high price uh, tag in order to make sense. Otherwise, why would you actually need it? So that remains to be seen in the in-depth uh, review that I'll be doing now that I've unboxed it. All right, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell down below to get notified when new videos come out on My Deep Guide. Also, remember to check out the My Daily Organizer. Links to it are down below to the web shop and also more importantly to the My Daily Organizer playlist, which contains a ton of videos that are there to help you understand what My Daily Organizer is, how it works, what it does, what it doesn't do, how to best utilize it, best practices, commonly asked questions, installation instructions, tips and tricks, the whole shebang is there for you to check out if you are already a user to basically get to know how to use it best. And if you're not a user, but you're thinking, hey, this might be something for me, check out the videos and then you'll see because they are fairly uh, covering pretty much everything so that you can uh, understand if this is a product for you or not. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.